Hey, 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 weed. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good evening, good night, or grand rising, depending on where you are. Good afternoon, too. I mean, whatever now. It's evening where I am. So, uh, I'm saying it actually is night. It's, it's well into the night. You know, night is well underway. So, uh, I'm your girl, Lati. This is Tears and Weed Tarot Show. We are a channeled messenger where testimony meets Tarot. Testimony unites with Tarot. We are a channeled messenger that channels with the Most High God, the source of all of creation. It's infinite intelligence, the one mind, the infinite intelligence of the Creator uh, made everything in creation. And the Most High loved its word on everything. And so the infinite can speak to us using all things. And so we like to look across the entire spectrum as much as we can gather to our fingertips and, and have the conscious ability and awareness and ability to understand that we uh, look and see how we can marry these things, right? Whether it's text, whether it is uh, nature, metaphysics, physics, uh, uh, science like all of it you know the word inspiration intuition uh we have cards we have crystals we have you know the whole nine i mean so if you can marry those pieces together and be okay with how the creator itself used this intelligence to call everything in creation like everything that exists did the creator make by his intelligence and it left a word on everything and it can speak to us and so yeah we can be so we have a couple of texts here, and we are speaking on the wholeness of creation this evening. We have been thinking about the wholeness in the spirit that binds us all. Yes, the breath of life, the breath of creation of the Father, its spirit, its Holy Spirit that flows through. We breathe it in. You know, it binds all of us. It is creation in the flow itself, right? And it binds everything. And... uh there are sentiments that creation is separate and we we are not linked and connected to one another when uh, our texts you know that we study all say that we are that we are uh, definitely all connected and sewn in and molded in together yeah we weaved in this whole fabric of creation itself so uh, let's jump on in we are in this version right here first this is the book that i cut my teeth on you know having getting my spirituality awareness and consciousness and, and free feet grounded in 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 some of these the old principles and the principles of the most high and who we are in in that term and so we are here in uh corinthians 12 chapter 12 and we're gonna uh go through Chapter 12, 1 through 12. I'm not going to read every word verbatim. I'm going to read the words that Spirit tells me to read. So bear with me as we go through this, okay? So, uh, now concerning the spiritual gifts, brethren, I would, have, I would not have you ignorant, right? Wherefore I give to you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls a curse that no man can say that the Lord is not the Lord, the Lord in the Holy Ghost. And there are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. Diversities of gifts, but of the same Spirit, okay? Now, there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, the same Creator, the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God, which work in all, right? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Yeah. For to one is given by the spirit of the word of wisdom. We have another, the word of knowledge. Right, that's two. We have by faith, the same spirit, by faith. So we got wisdom, knowledge, and faith, all in the same spirit right now. We have the gift of healing. We have uh, 
to another one of working miracles, the gift of working miracles, the gift of prophecy, the gift of discerning spirits, the gift of division of tongues, divers of tongue, divers kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of the tongues. But all these work that one in the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. Hmm. For as the body is one, have many members, and all members of that one body, being many, are one body. And by one spirit are we all called, are we all connected, one spirit. Pardon me for the reading of the word. I read what the Spirit tells me to read. So flow with me and give me your grace and mercy, please. Thank you. Ask the Spirit to discern to you and, and, and work it out if, if you feel uh, any kind of way. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. Jumping on to the Bhagavad Gita. Because we see this thing, has a, the Creator has spoken to us across the plane this message to let us know that we are whole and we are complete that the spirit of the most high god is not a singular spirit but is at least seven spirits and we talk about those seven spirits and we talk about one of them being wisdom and we just spoke about wisdom being called first it is the principal thing by which we are all called and we are all made going back to that chapter eight proverbs yeah that was with the most high in the beginning yeah, we talk about how it is the most precious thing to have. Because when we are wise, we will see that we are one. That there is no break in creation. That all of creation is whole. That the creator itself is in all of his creation. And his word is written in and on everything. And that his breath of life connects and binds all of creation. And to come into a unity mindset. A conscious awareness that we are connected, collectively, consciously connected, beloved. Again, these eyes don't see nothing. If you question how the wonder of your sight, beloved, and how do these little organs that are placed in your vessel see me as I see me, as you see me, we see the same. We pick up the information and we discern we discern it and analyze it and have it revealed onto us the same. We are connected. Yes. Yes, beloved. Where are we at? Yes. This world was made by God. Bhagavad Gita. Come on with it. This world was made by God after all. Yeah. He himself finds joy in his handiwork. Otherwise, wouldn't he have learned long ago not to create the universe at all? If he wasn't going to find joy in everything, he created experiences itself in everything. Is that right? Yeah. An expansive attitude is a natural part of the creative process and therefore is intrinsic to the ever newness of divine bliss. The correct way to participate in samsara is to play one's part consciously, non-identified with the ego. The scriptures say that God created the universe in order to en enjoy itself through many. Scripture says himself. Spirit says itself. Because the source has no gender. The scripture says that God created the universe in order to enjoy itself through many. To enjoy itself through many. Yes. Hmm. The essential difference this is talking about two types of people, those who serve the Lord to serve their ego and those who serve the Lord in quiet and hermit, like just like just, you know, I'm I'm out here in the trees hugging trees and I'm just wanna, you know, sit here and don't do nothing. And then there's 
people who serve on to just serving the masses because, you know, it gives them some sort of sentiment to do that, right? The essential difference between a joyful actor in the play of Samsara and the hermit who disdains any participation in this play at all is both superficial. For both types of truth seekers, whether you're a truth seeker to spread the word, to participate joyfully, and to do the work, if you're a truth seeker to do that, or if you're a truth seeker to only seek onto truth for self and not participating in truth spreading, any of that is two different paths for truth seekers. You can do that, right? But the difference it, it is like both types, either way, offer themselves up to God wholly. And, and you do that for to God to do with you the vessel as it will. And that's just it. All of it is for the source to experience itself through the many. Yeah. One who would live entirely for God must first of all be sure in his own heart that in doing so, he is not merely shirking responsibilities. The unfortunate truth is that few so-called devoutees truly renunciate and embrace their calling with an entirely pure motive. What do we mean an entirely pure motive? Is that possible for us to have an entirely pure motive? Like, I know for self, I'm here because I want to spread the word, you know, and, and help people come into a conscious awareness that they are whole and that they are complete. That we can have life fulfilled here in, 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 in now. Like, we don't have to pass away and go somewhere else to, to have fulfillment and joy like to be in the plane and have the eight wonders that are our uh you know our six senses in addition to um our one mind consciousness and uh our intuition yeah and those are wonders that we experience, and the Most High experiences those wonders as we experience. So every time we tap into that one mindset, you know, and, and go lean into, you know, first the kingdom to notice that, that the duality is there, right? The duality. So we have a spiritual essence and we have a human being. Uh, we're being, our spiritual essence is being human. So that's a duality, right? And to come into union with that duality and balance with that is a whole thing, beloved. To know that you have to come into center with who you are uh, truly at your spiritual essence and recognizing what you are, who you are, and who called you, who made you. What are you connected to? You know, what is your essence? So your essence being spiritual and coming into a mindset and awareness of that gets you back in touch with your your trueness, your, your, your true connection. That is not here to put down that duality but come into unity, right? So to come into unity and balance, the Book of Secrets goes through that, right? So we, we, we pull all of these together. So we've seen two things so far. One, that we are called by the same spirit, by the same creator, who has several different spirits, right? The most high God. Not only do we have the breath, you know, but we also have, you know, uh, its intelligence, right? The mind, the intelligence of the creator. And those three elements, the creator itself, its mind, the infinite intelligence that it used to create all things, principle, wisdom, or i.e. its word, right, um, which I think is limiting because it's way more than a word. It's the, the intelligence of all. Is the intelligence in the word the same? No. Word, is it greater than the word? Yes. Okay, so intelligence, infinite intelligence of the creator. Yeah. That, yeah, okay. 
So just had to, you know, kind of work that out and, and, and have spirit speak to me on that. And then uh, we have the breath of life. Yeah, the flow, the, the essence of source. Yes, that flows through everything. So those three, right? But then the spirit, the source also has seven spirits, right? And so we just went through, you know, those gifts, those gifts that we have that, that are given on to all of us. They are given on to all of us. And we they operate everywhere like those tenets and those principles and those gifts operate everywhere they operate within us in the principle am i saying this right how am i supposed to say it the source or the intelligence now now is all now is all there is yeah so now is all. So all of the intelligence of everything is held in the now. Is that right? And the more that we learn, the more it grows. So creation is expanding from within itself outward. And, and going forward, is it rising or is it moving forward? Is it moving forward and rising at the same time? Okay. So the moving forward rising ascension process is happening as we continue to grow. Creation grows. We learn creation grows. We ascend. Creation itself ascends. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And there are universal principles that we can use because when we dig into the, the wisdom and the operation of wisdom, right the source itself used its wisdom intelligence to call the universe i know it might be a little choppy but just stick with your girl it's coming together the wit i might it should i reshoot no okay anyways source said we're gonna get it out the creator the most high god of all things of all creation use its infinite intelligence to make us all and the way that the infinite intelligence does that it has a system of operation thank you source so just like any other computer or anything there's a system of operation a mode of operation there are principles and guiding you know laws that go along with this whole thing again principalities that we you know wrestle against principalities and you know cetera's so considering in the book of secrets with Deepak Chopra says that every life is spiritual, right? In this text, every life is spiritual. We've seen that. We've seen it twice, right? One book said that we all called by God. God made everything and everything is made for God's will and purpose. It is to please onto God, the most high God. And everything that we do, we experience it through God. So if I tap in and I say, hey, spirit of joy, do you want to go do something? I'm allowing my spirit, to jo spirit of joy to experience joy through me. So, yeah, pretty much. So the joy of the Lord is experienced itself as I am experiencing joy. Yeah, basically. So if, 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 if you say, Ooh, most high, what is it that we want to eat today? And most high say, I want a cheeseburger. Then the most high is enjoying a cheeseburger because you're enjoying a cheeseburger as the most high. It's simple, right? I mean, it's sound, you know, raw witch girl. There you go. So, to be consciously aware and to be an operant and act in the same fashion as the intelligence of the most high God, understanding that when we have experiences, it is the same as the source seven experiences and if our goal is to come into alignment with the most high god we have to understand how to do that right so it's these principles on how we get there who are y'all still here you still with me i hope so okay come on in 10 principles yo it's 10 we ain't gonna get through all of them today we ain't really gonna you know do all that if we get through the 10 it'll be because we only gonna read the first half of them because it's like uh, 10 laws and they're universal and personal. Oh, yes, because we do this on, it's on levels, right? So you as an entity of the most high, yeah, a pixel, you operate on the same principles that wisdom 
operates on on a universal scale so when we say we are digging into the principles of wisdom and those attributes and we will operate the way that the source the most high operates that's what that is operating in the way that its intelligence operates because if you following the same operation mode of mechanism as the most high god to <laughs> tell me how productive and efficient you will be in creating creation and moving it forward and growing it and being edifying onto source. Getting into alignment. Experiencing joy. Allowing the Father's joy to experience itself as you experience. <laughs> Get that. I told you it was going to come together. I told you the source to come start picking up all these little pieces. And then before you know it, you've been through all that in the pot and we got a stew. Because it sounded like I had carrots and peas and kale and, and beef and all that. Like, I, what the hell is she talking about? All these different books and trying to bring this here together. She reaching. No, no. It's just a grand mix of creation. The ability to bring all these pieces together and see how this great cosmic design creates a whole wonderment that's like, wow, is that what the source really did? Let's jump back in here. Yeah, because we are pixels of the source. And we are called by its intelligence, and it has a mode of operation. And if we operate in that fashion, what can we create? Because that is the purpose of us being here as pieces of the source. We are co-creators. We create our experience. We create our life. We create everything that is around us in this little, you know, our little space. And whether you want to be dialed in and consciously aware of how you're act activating yourself, if you want to participate in this way or that way, it really doesn't matter. Because everything around you is still going to operate on these same universal laws. And you will still be beholden to the same universal laws. But at least now we can see what's really happening around us. You know what I mean? So if you want to tap in or tap out, you know, it's up to you. How much you want to do and be consciously aware to put your attention and focus on. Come on, I'm here. So number one, universal. We're just going to stay on the universal. The, universal is, the universe is a mirror of consciousness. A mirror of consciousness. So if you can see that consciousness itself, do you want to do universal or do you want to do personal? Because I didn't ask. Spirit says personal, so we're going to scratch universal for right now. That might be too broad, okay? Spirit said let's break this down to the personal level. Because we talked about, you know, that we, you know, pixels, a source itself. And if we tap in and know that, and just know that whatever we doing, source experience that through us, it does. So when we say source is with you everywhere through whatever it is you're doing, it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Personal, the events in your life is reflect who you are. The events in your life reflect who you are. Now, of course, we know certain things that are pretty, you know, we are beholden to the actions of others. So we have to, you know, don't take everything on to like, yeah, this is just all it. Because it's not, you know. We, 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 we are in this plane and, and we, you know, have things that are going to happen to us and happen in our lives because somebody else made a choice to do something that just, you know, was probably shitty, you know. But as we are active choosers and we are making choices, the events in our life reflect who you are, who we are. Second one, the people in your life reflect aspects of self. So if you want to learn more about who you are as a person or what you're vibrating, um, what level you're vibrating on, look at the people that you surround yourself with. They, they reflect aspects of your life. And that's not good, bad, or indifferent. It's just so for self-discovery. And that's, that's just it. You're like, it's no judgment. We all do this, right? Um, personal. Whatever you pay attention to will grow. Whatever the source puts its focus and intention on, it comes to pass. Source says, let there be light. There was intention and focus on that. And huh, did not light exist, it came to be. So, and you can see that whether you are religious or spiritual or not. Whatever it is that you put your focus and intention on, you manifest it. You bring it about. We do this uh, by, we call things that are not and make them, um, and we call things that are not as 
as if they were, and then they be. There was a time where people didn't have cell phones or telephones, period, and now we do. Now we can see each other in a place where we're not. We video call, and then we've already been dreaming about holograms like since way back when, and now we do have holographic images. Like, we create whatever we put our intention on. We do. In the one reality, consciousness creates itself. That's another reminder of the other two. That God being supreme, pure conscious itself in the infinite intelligence, it potentiates itself in all things. It does. Because it is consciousness. The great conscious mind. Am I wrong for saying that? No? Okay, good. Sometimes I say too much and spirit be hushing me up, though. But if the most high is consciousness itself, it can create itself using its intelligence. And you are a piece of the most high's consciousness. So, yes, you as a piece of pure consciousness can continue to create. You are a co-creator. And you can create whatever you put your intention on. Yes. There is no place outside of creation for divinity to stand. Uh, I got to finish this sentence. In the one reality, consciousness creates itself, which is the same as saying that God is inside its creation. So we said that, but just in a roundabout way. God is inside his creation. There is no place outside for, of creation for divinity to stand. All of divinity, all of God is in its creation. And all of creation is in God. It is one, we can't, we are not separate. It is the same. Yes. Omnipresence means that if any place exists, God is there. But whereas God can be attentive to an infinitude of worlds, human beings use attention, attention selectively. So again, whatever we choose and select to put our attention on is where we can create, where we can manifest. And you can see how you're placing your intentions by looking at the reflections in your life, the people around you, and the events that are reflecting back to you. And then we can realize that nothing is random. That's number four. Nothing is random. Your life is full of signs and symbols. Nothing is random. The next one, number five. At any given moment, the universe is giving you the best results possible. Is that true? Yes. That's a hard one, huh? Yeah. Because especially when it's so much loss and grief, um, us having taken on the whole human being, we are engulfed in sentiment, in emotion, in sensory. Our entire vessel, our entire being, not our spiritual, but the physicality of this being, the vessel, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, the skin, your emotions, the ability to feel, touch, feel, your intuitional awareness, and then coming into complete connectivity and unity, understanding that we are of the same conscious mind. There are eight wonders. The first six is pretty tough because we get a lot of sensation, a lot of information which could be completely overwhelming. The ability to pull back into self and meditate and detach from the amount of sensory data that we get is critical, beloved. Spirit can only suggest, strongly recommend that you find time and ways to quiet the mind, to come into quietness so that you can feel your connectivity to the one mind. 
in that space, you will you will feel and see that in any given moment, the universe is giving you the best results possible. We are called into alignment with the Source, the Most High, for a design that we do not know. And being in our space, we have selective attention. We can only pay attention to an X amount at one given time, at any now. And often it is within a small degree of separation from other selves. So if something happens and is more than three, four degrees of separation away and you feel that impact, you may not have any understanding or, or comprehension as to why. And it may feel so random and such a violation of loss and tragedy that it is very difficult, very difficult to understand why the Source, the Creator of all, would do such a thing in such a way. Why it would allow such a thing in such a way. That I cannot explain. I cannot give. It is well beyond my level of understanding and revelation. Definitely not. It is the mysteries of uncertainty that is baked into the infinite intelligence. The uncertainty that, that when we attempt to understand and explain, you just cannot. And you get down to the point of where you just say, it's God's will. Because we have no other words to explain the unexplainable or the uncertainty of intelligence. Number six is your inner awareness is always evolving. Your inner awareness is always evolving. Our bodies are sensory vessels and it's taking in information through numerous portals all the time. Your skin is a huge organ receiving information all day long. Your eyes receive information, your nose, your mouth, your ears. Everything is receiving. So your inner beingness is always evolving because it's always learning. Even if you are unconsciously, you're not consciously aware of the learning, it's happening. It's happening all the time. Number seven, the direction of life is from duality to unity. Duality to unity. Duality, understanding that we are spiritual, separate from the physical, and to come into unity with that, to come into balance. Another duality is self against other selves, creation against creation. That is a duality. Not understanding that I am you and you am I. I and I. That philosophy. Coming into unity. Wholeness. Understanding that the creator called me. I am made from the creator. We are the same. I am a piece of it. I am engulfed in it. I could never be separate. So the lie that I need to do anything to go anywhere to get to my source, to get to my creator is blatant lie. The power to save is within. The kingdom of the Lord is within you. It's in your spiritual essence. You are bound and held in all of creation. All of creation. Are they not bound and held in creation? Can they be separated from you, Father? No, never. Can we ever be out of your hands? Is there anywhere we could ever go where you are not? No. Are you everywhere? It is a blanket, bold-faced lie. You are held in creation. You carry the kingdom with you. It is in you. It is with you. The direction of life is from duality to unity. And our eighth wonder is one mind consciousness. Because we come from.
from one consciousness. The reality and realization that there is only one conscious If you open yourself up, if you open yourself to the force of evolution, it will carry you wherever you want to go. If you open yourself up to the force of evolution, it will carry you wherever you want to go. Again, we said your innerness, your innerness is always evolving. So if your internet is always evolving and you open yourself up to that evolution, you can go wherever you want to go, beloved. Anywhere. The ninth one. The fragmented mind cannot get you to unity. But you have to use it along the way. There's a did we talk about the seven spirits? We talked about wisdom and knowledge. We talked about healing and prophecy. We talked about divers of tongues, the interpretation of tongues. Those are fragments of consciousness, the ability, the awareness to do to the spirits, right? These gifts, the spiritual gifts. Those are fragmented pieces, right? You have to use them along the way. But did it also say that they are self-same spirits? So to realize that they are self-same, all in, of the same spirit, like that's unity. But the pieces that are of that unity, I use them on the pathway to unity because if I can master all of them that means I can bring together all of the pieces all of the fragments we started this with saying that hello I am Latia channel messenger sitting with the most high God the source of all its creative mind it is its, its intelligence the infinite intelligence the cosmic mind the universal consciousness which has spoken to all of creation everywhere, using and leaving its word on everything. It uses every piece of creation to experience itself. And you being the piece of creation, as am I, we are operants in this whole system that allows the source itself to experience itself to grow creation because as you evolve creation itself evolves so every time a piece of consciousness of creation potentiates actuates it actuates grows evolves anything just be the fact that you exist has grown creation yeah it did and your existence no matter how fleeting is held within the collective conscious in creation always nothing is ever outside of creation and everything in creation holds divinity is that true yes it does why because the source itself is divine and everything is called from the source The fragmented mind cannot get you to unity, but you must use it along the way. Number 10. You are living in many dimensions at once. The appearance of being trapped in space and time is an illusion. You're living on more than one plane. I'm gonna end this little part with just saying that you're living in more than one plane. This ain't it. Just say. As we talk about ascension and moving through levels, yeah, and if everything is happening now and all is now, then everything everywhere is happening now. Because now is all there is. Just, I know. I know. These ten principles arguably represent ways to conceive the operating system that keeps the one reality going. 
In truth, the whole thing is inconceivable. Our brains just aren't set up to operate on those inconceivable lines. Is it really a very difficult stretch for us to think that the intelligence of the Most High God, like the source of all of creation, of everything that exists, everything that exists, the source of it all, and its intelligence, like we can conceivably conceive all of that? Ah, no! I mean, we can't even decipher everything that's in this plane. I mean, we ain't even been to the bottom of the ocean. How we, we don't even know how does a uh, anglerfish that live way so deep down have a light bulb in the back of his world on the top of wherever it's at. I think it's in his mouth or whatever, but whatever it is, that light attracts fish and they come over there and they get ate. Now, how does the those other little animals and sea creatures down there that light up and illuminate and you can see red and yellow and purple and blue and green all that in the depths of the ocean but we sit here in our position feeling like we i don't know nothing the more i learn the more i realize i don't know the more i learn the more i seek revelation because it teaches me that i don't know nothing just say it. Just tells me that I know it's a whole lot more than I need to learn. So I seek all the time. That's why I got so many books around here. I'm just saying, come on in here. These ten principles arguably represent ways to conceive of the operate, operating system that keeps the one reality going. They can adapt, however, to living unconsciously. Living unconsciously. Every creature on this earth is subject to laws of nature. Only humans think. What does all of this matter to me? Well, you can opt out and decide to live as if duality is real. Like we really are separate and we are just really fragmented pieces of just floating around here, you know, haphazardly bumping and just chaos and, you know, that they're, we're not connected any other way. Like, but you can all go to your eye doctor and understand that these little things don't see fuck shit. Like, we could all go up in there. We could all do a Google search right now. And you can see that your eyes don't see shit. That it pick up information and light. That's it. And we put together the pieces in our mind. And the fact that we can look at the same tree and touch it and feel that that tree is right there. Huh? Bring them pieces together one time for your mind. Yeah. What does it all matter? Well, you can opt out and decide to live that the duality is real. That we not all one. You can decide that. Yeah. You won't see that these ten principles have any bearing on you. They don't. To you, they don't. It don't matter. We're not connected. It's just so. It's a cosmic joke that the same laws will continue to uphold your life even if you don't recognize it. We started with that too. You don't have to recognize which one. Yeah, they can't see the moon ecology. Thank you. Well, uh, we, you know, just saying. I'll be talking to spirit. Forgive me, y'all. But the one mind, the consciousness of the one mind, thank you, Father. Clearing the cards, any energy from any past session, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, thank you. Yes, 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 it is a shuffle. Let's look at what we can't see. Let's just pull a card or two, one, two times. We did most of the talking on just to talk about the fact that we are all one. And in and, and that oneness, the Most High God has, you know, is His self the creator. It's all, and, and all of the source is all of us, right? And all of the intelligence and everything in creation is all held within it. Yeah. I feel the energy building in these cards. Um... It's all held within us. And the intelligence of the Most High made all things. Yes, pride. Pride is a thing. Yes, Father, I feel it. You know, and it is prideful to think that we have such an awareness of source that we can define it as this is of source and this is not of source. And that in itself is a duality. When we say and define what is of source and what is not, it is one of those things that causes, you know, the conflict 
because it is belief and unbelief at the same time. If source created all things, then all things are created by the source. So there is no way that I could say anything is not of source when all things are created by the source. It's just true. Do you want anything in here? No. Okay. Turn it over. You're good enough is on the bottom. Was that it? Be bold and make the first move. Bring love into the situation. We got a pride here. You are very close to achieving your goal. Is this? No. Prosperity lies ahead. Pride. Prosperity. So is that a choice between pride or prosperity? Yeah. Bringing love or being bold? No. So we got those two out. I wasn't quite for sure feeling what Source was saying for me to pull. Seems like in order, don't let the pride get in the way so that your prosperity can come in. And I believe that that is the source telling us all to not be prideful. Like to release what we think our understanding is because that understanding limits, um, it limits our prosperity. It does. Spirit says you are good enough. I don't know if somebody was having a question on that, whether they are good enough to get to this prosperity, you know, and maybe some sort of pride is, is in here. But I feel like as a collective, a collective, a unit, a unit, that um, pride is an issue with considering who and what is of the source and recognizing that all of us are good enough just in its current state yes because all of us are pieces of source the source why would the source reject itself source do you reject yourself no do you love all of you yes source loves all of itself every piece Adjustments are required. Yeah, I would say adjustments in our mindset, and that's a challenge to to adjust the mindset to accept unity versus duality. This was this no. There is it. Is it here? Here. Yeah, communication is challenged. Communication is challenged. Not only communication here, communication here. Like communicating with ourself in the spirit, meditation, and receiving or trusting the intuitive downloads that we are getting. Like maybe the intuition and the spirit are disconnected. What is this? Spiritual intuition. Yeah. It's blocked due to unbelief. Spiritual intuition is blocked due to unbelief, Father says. Is it this? Is it this? Is it something in here? Show the world the real you. That's blocked. You know, not being being able to be authentic, to allow your spiritual self to come through. And it's very difficult to allow your spiritual essence to come through when you're we're we're not tapping into it. Sitting in meditation and and, and, and really, really digging into who you are, what you are, where you come from and what we are connected to. Yeah. You want this? No. Okay, what is it? What do you need to release? Spirit says, what do you need to release? I would gather it is that, uh, do you want anything here? No? 
this one. Nothing is yet in stone. Spirit turned it upside down because it is. It, that is set in stone. Everything is held in creation, and that's just it. Source is all of creation, and all of creation is source. You could never be outside of creation, ever. You could never be outside of the Father. We do. We are on a journey to ascension, to grow, to learn, to evolve, to push creation forward, to move from one piece, one space to another space, to another space, to another space, and another space going forward, right? Because... At the end of the day, all of Source wants to be unified with itself, experiencing itself throughout, you know, space, time, and evolution, but also to come back together with self, to be whole. And all of us have a longing for something because we, we know that the connectivity is there. We're connected, but not connected, you know. Yeah, we want to go back. That's why we have a longing to, to you know, for salvation, to be saved. Because we want to be connected. Is this it? Luck is on your side. Is that supposed to be upside down? Is it supposed to be the other way? Is this the card that you want? No? Okay. Is it this one? No. Was it spill? What is it? Do you want to say something, Source, Most High? I feel all. Is it creation? Is it cycles? The cycles, okay. Cycling up, moving forward. Yes, for ascension. Yes. And continuing to go up level for ascension. 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 All the way up until we reach where? Coming back to wholeness with you. Coming back all the way up to where you are. Yes. So all of your pieces are spread out all over creation. And they are all journeying, journeying on a journey back. Back into wholeness, into unity. Yes. Is there anything else in this deck, Father? No. Meditate and contemplate. We talked about meditation and contemplation. To think about it. That was one side. You guys see that? Right? Meditation. Contemplation. What's the other side? Take time to breathe. Meditation, contemplation, taking time to breathe. I felt the energy in taking time to breathe pull to the reverse because people are not taking the time to breathe. And I think understanding that you are good enough is that also a challenge. Yeah. And I think that people realizing that they are good enough, like, how can you tell me that I am a piece of the source? Like, I'm a piece of God. I'm a piece of creation. You are good enough. That I am a piece of God. Yeah, you are. In whatever state that you are in right now, you are. You just are. You were created from the creator in creation, and everything in creation that exists is of the Most High God. It just is. And um, to know that you are a piece of the source called and made for a specific design and a specific purpose. And that purpose is to allow the source to experience itself through you. 
which one? This. Okay, what is this one? Yeah. I was trying to figure out which one. It was about to fly out the deck. Y'all know how these cards get. When the father say, this is the card, the father pull, says, hey, that this is the card. Yeah, this one. That one. Okay. So it says, look at the big picture. Again, all of these bits and pieces and like these theories and this, this stuff like that can be like inconceivable, like really, really inconceivable, like mind blowing. I mean, at least for me it was. And I don't know, like I've been a student of like the wisdom of the ages and, you know, d discovering like where did we come from? What is our deep knowledge, like the knowingness, especially when you have a knowingness and you can feel and you know that there's more, there's more. And to go on a discovery, to see the more, to find the more, and to continue to, to learn. And the more that I learn, the more that I learn that there's more to learn. The more that I learn, the more I learn that there's more to learn. So seeing a bigger picture, yeah, that's a whole thing, beloved. It's a whole thing. And oftentimes, like I said, it is so close up on us that we can't see it. We can't. And it lends us to grief and suffering and disbelief and the duality of things that we feel from, you know, just coming into this manifestation. Holy Father, bless these cards and use them as a tool for your speaking to see that we feel. Thank you. There's, um, can be a conflict, especially when it comes to igniting and activating ourselves in this way. Igniting and activating ourselves in this way. Father, Holy Spirit, the infinite of all, would you please give us the card that you would like? Is this it? No. That you would like to speak into your wheat field. Is there a message here? Father says, coming together, harmony in the heavens, resolution. All of this choppiness to really explain that we are one. Yeah. Trust the process. Dharma. Was that it? Do you want that one? Do you want this one right here? Future thinking. Evolutionary downloads. Recalling power. And when I read Recall in Power, I heard the phrase, that sentence we read, that the fragmented mind cannot bring us to unity, but we must use it along the way. So recalling the power and understanding that there is power in unity to bring those pieces together, work on marrying the fragments, Seeing how the intelligence of nature operates the same way as the intelligence inside your body. How life has seasons the same way that you go through growth seasons is the same way that creation itself goes through growth seasons. The world around you operates the same way as your growth pattern operates the same way. You can see consistencies in the intelligence of the source across itself. They are stable. 
for the, you know, uncertainty built in, but it's stable, beloveds. And we can see how this, this, this shuffle. Is there anything further? This? I can't feel. It was stuck. The heart chakra, unlocking generosity. Which one? Heart chakra opening. Opening up this mind space here. Releasing the stuff that's in here. Breaking up the blockages. Breaking up the separation that would tell us that we are not whole. That we are not complete. That we are separate from one another. That we are not pieces of the source. Uniquely designed to express ourselves in our unique capacity. Is that right? Yeah. To, uh, to remember that. End of the cycle. New, what is that? Is that information? Yeah, new information. Energetic shift. The end of a cycle. It may be definitely differ, different. Do you want something here? This one? Throat chakra, authenticity, self-expression. We talked about the, end of the ability to just be your unique self because experiencing or expressing your uniqueness is how the source experiences itself in the variety of unique ways. So if the Father God created creation, to experience itself, then it experiences itself uniquely in every expression. Why would I want to be me and just be me the same way all the time? I want to change, I want to evolve, I want to grow. So if I'm in the mind of the source and I can see myself and experience myself through everything and everything and everything, I can experience myself in every possibility that there is to experience. And the more of us that experience, the more ways that the source experiences, the more ways it learns, the more ways it grows. Hence, edifying onto self, edifying onto the source. Yeah. Is there anything else, Father? Yeah. Let's get it. Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Clarity, divine healing, high vibrational energy. Which one are we focused on? Clarity. Getting some clarity. And I feel that breathe out and take time to meditate when we look at clarity. Because clarity will come as we meditate and sit in the spirit and ask the source to reveal onto us all things. You will realize that you are connected to the conscious mind and that your intuition, like the source gives us information. It will talk to us. But we had the heart chakra opening. There is a blockage there. And it's hard to receive intuition into this space and have it properly discerned when there's a blockage. This one. This one. Is it this? Potent connection is what I'm picking up. 
potent connection. When you realize that you are a piece, a pixel of source, and that you can tap into the cosmic mind, and you can pull out what it is that you need to evolve, to grow, to push creation forward, to manifest. Again, you can create whatever you put your intention on. That's what the Book of Secrets said. You can create whatever you put your attention on. So coming into clarity. Yeah. Conscious manifesting. Conscious manifesting. Divine alchemy. Y'all see that? Anchoring. Grounded. Getting grounded. What grounds you, Father? Meditation. Meditation. You will discover how to become a divine alchemist. What is the cosmic ordering? I mean, the intelligence of the Most High God did create everything. It does have a syncopating design. It knows how to weave the fabric of creation in time itself. Is there a cosmic ordering? Absolutely, beloveds. When you meditate and you seek diligently, do you understand divine alchemy? Yes. Why? Because everything is made out of the same elements. When we're talking about wielding source material to create, that's alchemy. You are an alchemist. And when you meditate, conscious manifestation, that right there becomes a piece of cake. Because like the book said, you can create whatever it is that you put your attention on. You put your attention on it, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. Clearing those stories, releasing past lives, freedom. Fulfilling soul contracts, remembering who you are. Do you remember who you are, beloved? No. We started with the fact that we don't remember who we are. We come into the plane as spiritual beings, spiritual essence dropping into a physical vessel, having to be formulated and meshed and cared for in, in, in a space and time for years before we come into a space where we can actually begin true self-discovery. And then you spend time removing the layers of conformity depending on your environment that you dropped into. And as you remove those layers of conformity and getting in touch with your true self, then that's when you are able to wield. Is it either one of these? I feel like. Learning experiences, wisdom, Transmission. Earth intelligence. Here to learn. Learn who you are. Do a work. What is that work? Allow source to experience itself. To come into unity with self. Is that it? Do you want any of these? We done. Is there anything left in here? There is. Okay, well let's keep it going. You know, to come into unity with source as we were saying. To remember what it is that you are supposed to be doing. Is this anything here? Where is it?
but we just don't remember that we are all one, that we are pieces of the same entity, that the cosmic mind is connected and that all of creation is connected and you as a cosmic being, a spiritual being, either one of these, no? You as a spiritual being in a physical vessel, you know, it having taken on the whole human experience, so saturated with our senses and the information that we receive all the time, is like uh, this one, this. Success, regeneration, abundance, downloads. What do we focus on, Father? Abundance, downloads. What is the lesson? Spirit said it's blocked, blocked. It's blocked. Because it's heart space, it's heart chakra, it's blocked. We're resistant. And in order to get to the space of where our abundance is, to regenerate success, we need to unblock that heart chakra. Spirit recommends that we do that work. We do that work. All done. Anything else, Father? No. The I am presence, accessing the divine within. Who are you, beloved? A spiritual being human. H-U-E-M-A-N. A spiritual being human. You are a pixel of the source. A piece of the cosmic mind itself. And you are pure potentiality. Pure consciousness. And you can potentiate yourself in any way you choose. But know this, our job is to come into alignment with the source, right? That's why we're here, to serve the source, because we are source itself. And realizing that reaching our own highest good individually is how we edify self and source. And to do that, to reach our highest good, pleases the source and to serve that out into the wheat field is especially pleasing to the source because not only am I edified and edifying onto source but I assist in edifying you so that you too are edifying to source so I'm edifying self and other selves the source and the source Double mission. Double mission. That's how it comes back full circle. So, I know that this was a uh, long read. We had one hour and 15. And it was choppy. It's late. It's not very animated and hyper and high energetic. But I do believe that it was packed with a lot of good tidbits for you guys to kind of go and things to make you go, hmm, things to make you go. You know, just chew on it. Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. At the very least, you go on the discovery to ask yourself some questions and let it sit in your spirit and see how it's discerned onto you. Can you mesh it up with other pieces of information across the plane? Don't take my word for it. You see what we did? We had three books and two sets of cards. 
okay? Because when I want to go seeking for something, I want to make sure that it's show enough approved. Study to show thyself approved first and foremost because the first law of nature is self-preservation. Again, edifying onto self and onto source. I'm not going to feed anybody nothing that I wouldn't eat. Just saying. Well, I mean, you on a ham sandwich. I don't eat pork, but other than that. Until the next time, with your girl IT on Tears and Wheat to Row. Well, we just sit around and chop it up, kick some stuff around and see how it lands. See what comes out, you know? Tonight, I think, was pretty interesting. Just to reiterate that we are all one. We are. We're all one. Came from the same source, no matter how you slice it. No, no matter how you want to see them, it, envision it, uh, recognize it, be consciously aware of it, even if you don't have any spiritual affinity at all. Doesn't matter. Because the source made it all. So however you see the source, source says, I see you. <laughs> Because that's me. And I see me like that too. And it's all good. A lot of that stuff can be really hard to accept. Because a lot of it just fucking sucks. And it causes us grief. But how do we know the horrors if, if, if it's not there? The same way that we, we wouldn't is the duality. The black with the white, the manifest with the unmanifest, the, the, the cold and the hot, the, the north and the south, the, the, the hurt and, and the pain and the pleasure, the hurt and the healing. I mean, I'm just trying to put them together. You know what I'm saying? But it's the duality, it's the opposites, it's the polarity of the thing that we experience, the certainty and the uncertainty. And we have to go through it and get through it. But to know that you are always held in creation and source, that you can never be separated from the source, that there's nothing that you could do to be separated from the source, is there? What can they do? Spirit says damnation. What leads you to damnation? Blasphemy. What leads you to blasphemy? Denial of the source of all. Is there anything else that leads us to blasphemy? No. Is there anything else that leads us to damnation outside of denial of the source of all? If I accept is I accept the source is all, the source of all, my creator. All worship be unto the creator, glorification onto the most high God, the one who sits above, the one that called all of creation by his infinite intelligence. There is none above nor beside the most high God. All praises be unto it, which called all of creation, which I am held in and connected to forevermore. Is there anything that's blasphemous outside of that? No. Thank you. I submit to source only. Because to me, that's just what it is. Everything else is just source. In the Most High God that created it all. There's nothing above that. There's nothing beside that. And to think so, source says, is blasphemous. And that leads to damnation. Yeah, that running to and fro energy. Yeah. We don't want that. Mm -mm. We want to a sin, not be condemned to run to and fro. No. There is none beside the source. None. Nothing above the source. Nothing. And there's nothing outside of the source. Nothing. Until the next now. 
on the Tears of Wheat to Roast show with your girl Lati. Hope you come back and stick around. If you made it this far, subscribe. Subscribe. Again, we don't do nothing but chop it up. So if you got a couple now to spend with your girl, I love that you shared and you stayed and shared your space and time with me. And if you feel like there's other people that would get some edification out of this and with spending time, share it with them too. I love y'all. I love y'all so much. I love you because I love me. And I love me because I love the source, the creator that made all things by his infinite intelligence. The breath of life, the flow that connects and binds us all. Know that you are safe. You are whole. You are complete. You are safe. You are whole. And you are complete. Until the next now. Ashe.